The first obstacle that we want to integrate that I've built for you, at least most of it, would be those spinning platforms. So we're going to head under our prefabs folder and find the spinner. I'm going to drag this and drop this maybe down into just into this basic lower part of my world and move it around so that it's kind of in the way here uh, where the player is going and just press run and see what happens. And okay, it starts off spinning right away, knocking my player off. A couple things need to fix here. First of all, why is the player appearing there and not here? Well, there's a special object that I've created in your world called the spawn point. And wherever this is, this is where the player is going to begin and also return to if they fall off the edge. And right now, it's a little bit too far forward. So I want to have it selected and drag it back so that it is positioned kind of at the very beginning of the level where I would like it to be. Maybe even a little bit further down so that it's, the player's not falling too far when they spawn. Cool. Let's hit run and see what happens. There we go. Now the player is in the right spot. But this rotating platform is not quite rotating in the way that I want it to. It is rotating fine. And let's see what else it does. It also comes pre-built with this ability to knock the player around. If you add your own platform in that's custom, we're going to have to add a couple scripts to it to make it work in the same way. We'll get there in a sec. First of all, let's learn how to manipulate a platform that I have already provided you. Of course, you could begin by adding your own custom material. Maybe I like to add for these obstacles, usually like a red color to make it look kind of scary to the player so I can change the color here. But the main thing that I want us to look at is this spinner object that I've added actually has something hiding underneath it. If I click this downward arrow, the spinner itself is not actually that complicated. It's just a script the main level of this object. That has some settings, including rotation speed. So let me start the game. And this rotation speed can actually be clicked and dragged and adjusted. I can crank this up, or I can slow it way down to super slow. Or if I make it positive, it goes the opposite direction. Look at that. Zero, it stops. One, it goes clockwise. Minus one, it goes counterclockwise. You have full control over the speed of the spinners you put in your game just by changing this rotation speed setting. So actually here, I like this to be maybe minus one. Let's give the player a nice easy one from the start. And notice how it kind of sweeps over both platforms. Cool, I like that, it kind of causes trouble in more than one spot. That feels pretty good, although I don't like it necessarily going through this object. Now, I'm in play mode when I change the speed. You'll notice something when I stop the game, it's gone back to minus two. Any changes that you make while in play mode aren't remembered once you leave it. So what I need to make sure I do is make that setting committed permanently by changing it outside of play mode. And now when I play it, that setting will be remembered. Cool. Hey, there's these other settings as well. Rotate X, Y, and Z. What's up with this? Well, if I turn rotate X on, it's going to start rotating around the X axis and the same with the Z axis. So here, now we have a quite a strange platform. I can change the axes that it rotates around and now it's going really wonky so i can press reset rotation to set it back to the beginning how about just said okay this is kind of like a a windmill type platform uh, obstacle okay uh what about just x this one well it's not quite so interesting because it just rotates around on that axis so maybe not the right choice here but you do have some options for how you want your object to rotate in the spinner you can even kind of get it into a weird orientation and leave it running in that kind of uh, orientation itself. I'll let you play around with some of those settings yourself. For now, I'm going to leave mine at just rotating on the Y axis. Now, the last thing I want to do with this is I want this to not spin at the end, although I did like it going across both platforms. Right now, technically, I just want this to spin from the middle. So how do I make that happen? So one of the weird things about how Unity does rotations is that anything that's underneath the higher level is going to rotate around the edge of the upper level. So what I can actually do is look at my upper level. Where is it spinning right now? It's spinning along this far right edge, meaning that this is the point of spinning for the object. If I move it over so that that edge is in the center, the spinning point is now in the center of the path. And if I click on the actual spinning wall beneath it and move the wall back over like so, 
the wall's position has changed, but the spinning center is actually going to be where I left it previously. Check it out. If I run this now, it now spins around the middle, meaning it's only affecting this one platform and maybe, oh, this is how I want it to be for this actual game experience. So a bit of a finicky thing to do, but it's, it's definitely the easiest way to get this set up. Quick note on the spinning wall, it has a few things that are required for it to work properly. A, a mesh renderer for the visuals, a box collider so that we can actually run into it, and a rigid body so that it actually is affected by the physics system. Don't mess with any of these settings. However, if you make your own custom obstacle, you're going to have to add them. I'll get to that in a sec. Okay, just to practice, I'm going to add one more spinner over here that's going to operate maybe slightly differently, and we'll just make sure that everything's working okay. So I'm going to go into my prefabs. I'm going to drop another spinner into my game here and try to get it positioned relatively close to where I want it, maybe somewhere around there. And this one, I think I want it to also spin around its center. So how do I do this again? Well, this new spinner, I'm going to open it up. Maybe before I do anything, I'm going to run it and see where it spins. Okay, from that side edge there, perfect, which means the lower level, I, or sorry, the upper level, I move it to the edges in the middle. And then the under level, the lower level, I move it back to where I want it. And now this spinner should be spinning on that platform. And just to make th these things a bit different, I'm going to make this rotation speed, I'm going to make it go the opposite direction and a bit faster. So let's make it a positive three. So now it's a, a faster spinning one so that it de-incentivizes the player from going this way because it's really difficult. But if they want to take this path, they have the option to. Maybe I can get a good jump in here. I'm not playing well enough right now. Let's give it one more try. And I just immediately failed. Okay, you can do better than me at the playing. Okay, set a couple spinners up. What if I want to make my own custom spinner? That could be pretty cool because I can do something like this. Well, 3D object, what if I wanted to make, I don't know, a, a capsule that's over here and I wanted this to be something a little bit more like, um, let's stretch this thing out and maybe like a rocket and maybe what I'm going to do with this is have it, well, let me think for a sec here. I'm going to rotate this down so that it's kind of sideways. And I'm going to have this kind of be a little bit more of a, a stranger spinner that is something like this. And I want this to kind of almost be like a clock, where this is kind of like the clock hand going clockwise around here. So how am I, I actually going to make this capsule? Maybe I'll rename this clock hand just to kind of theme it a little bit. How do I get this thing to spin? Well, I have provided you in your scripts with a spinner script that you're going to need to run for this. And let's see. Oh, yeah, that's for something else. So the spinner script here, I can actually take and attach it to my object, except that if I want to be able to customize where it spins, I have to put it underneath something else. So here's the special trick for this. If I right click and create empty, I have a blank empty game object, something that doesn't yet have anything going with it. It's completely empty. And I'm going to move it to the spot where I want my spinner to rotate around. So let's get this down. Sometimes it's kind of hard to see. Move it around, get this to be right near the edge of where I want my spinner to be running. I think that's close enough for now. And I'm going to call this, rename it, maybe my clock spinner. And I'm going to take my clock hand and I'm going to drag it onto it so that's underneath the clock spinner, kind of like we see our spinners up here. And now I just need to make these look like the ones above. So what do my ones above have? Well, my spinner just has a spinner script attached to it. So I'll go to my clock spinner. I'm going to drag this spinner script onto this. Cool. Now it has the ability to rotate. Let's take a look and see what this does. What if I give this a bit of a speed? Anything going to happen here? Rotate on the X or on the Y axis, sorry. And hey, that spins exactly as I want it to. Let me jump over and see what happens. And it's kind of pushing me around a little bit. 
cool. So it has some ability for me to interact with it, but not exactly in the way that I wanted it to, because there's a couple things that we need to change still. Okay, so what else is different between my original spinners and this one? One more thing for us to be aware of in Unity is that we can actually tag objects as different things in our games. For example, my player up in the right is tagged as the player. This allows us to process special functionality just on the player and not on other things. And my spinners are tagged as moving obstacles. There's some logic in my game that requires a moving obstacle to be tagged for it to interact with it. So if I take this and I tag it as a moving obstacle, that's going to make it so that something different happens when the player interacts with it. And I forgot to actually give it some speed, but now I'll show you. If I just touch it, I get knocked backwards, even when it's not spinning. That's because with the moving obstacle tag attached to it, it now actually affects my player in a special way. Let's give this a bit of speed along that axis and touch it. And there we go. The player touches it and gets launched off. Technically, this is all you need to do to get this type of obstacle up and running. We could also add in some of our other rendering settings, our box collider and rigid body, but this is an option that we don't need to mess around with right now if we don't want to. It looks like it's working just fine in this state. So you can feel free at this point to create any type of object that you want. Maybe you want to make kind of like just a square that rotates around just to kind of look cool somewhere. It doesn't even need to be something that impacts the player. Check it out. I can just take the square, and if I don't want it to impact the player, just make it this a decorative thing. I can take my spinner script and attach it to this cube that I've made. And I'll just test it out when running. What if I give this a speed of like 10 and let it rotate on the X, Y, and Z? Or maybe just the X and Y, maybe just the X and Z. It's just kind of this cool spinning cube that's kind of decorative in the air. Maybe you want to use something like that to make your game have some cool effects in different spots. You can apply this script to anything in the game. I could even, if I wanted to, take this. Now, quick tip, if you're in game view and you go to your scene, you can actually edit things while they're moving like you're in the game. I'm going to take this platform and just for fun, because anything I change while the game is running isn't memorized, so I can mess with things and not have anything break. I'm going to attach a spinner to this platform. What if I was to rotate this on the X really slowly so that the player, if I go back into my game, actually had a mechanic where they had to kind of get on it while it's moving and then jump off it to get onto something else when it was high enough. So there's an example of a game mechanic that I could integrate into this that could be interesting. So it gives me some height, like a little elevator, and then I can jump off to get to the next thing. Hey, there's something there that you could try out. Spend some time, get some of these spinners up and running, maybe try to make a few of your own, and just get really comfortable with getting this particular obstacle made. And we'll move on to a new obstacle in the next tutorial.